Hey, it's the War Wonder here, searching for new plunder. This is the second episode of my West African Viking invasion, and plunder is what we're swimming in. So without further ado, what happened last time? We started with Count Hairstein in Monday, Brittany. We went south and carved out a nice piece of territory in Monday, Senegal. We made some changes, made sure it all had nice looking Danish names that I couldn't pronounce properly. And then after some raiding, some conquering, we formed a nice, beautiful looking kingdom. Oh, and the son there died during that. But, you know, who cares about that? What's next? Well, in this video, I hope firstly that we can cement our control in West Africa. Secondly, that we can make our kingdom resilient and not a flash in the pan. And finally, to spread the good Norse word throughout our kingdom. On that note, Let's go, Wanderers. Ah, uh, the Kingdom of Grenflod. Here we are again. So this is the general situation. Here's the borders. Not the best looking, but hey, we can improve on that. Now here's our king, King Hairstein. He's 70 years old now, getting on, and he's probably going to pass away soon, so we've got to get ready for that. But before, I said that I did want to expand in, into the Gambian Hills, and that's exactly what I plan to do next. Uh, break up some of these alliances, or weaken them at least. So, yeah, we have to prepare for that, and I'm going to prepare for that by expanding my military. With Crusader Kings 3, there are many ways you could expand your military. But I decided that men at arms was the best way of going about it. And currently, I have one unit of horsemen, one unit of light footmen, and one unit of bowmen. And that's got to change because I have two extra slots that I can fill. The previous three men at arms I got because of the terrain situation. But the next two I got to counter other factions. So I got one unit of Bondi and one unit of Varengian Raiders. Unfortunately, men at arms aren't instantaneous in terms of filling up, so I had to wait. So they're going to take 10 months. So we're going to wait about around about 10 months, at least. While waiting, I admired some of Scylla's handiwork. Oh, oops. <laughs> well, Scylla, well, you know, Scylla's a nice guy, really. I dread to think how many widows there are because of Scylla. But soon, it was time to declare war. Right, we're taking you down to size. I can't tolerate such a threat on my border. I'll just go for one. Right, they've already managed to unite. It's time to bring in the big guns. Ghana, I call on your support. With Ghanaian support, I was confident to siege the capital and take it. But it was now time for the decisive battle of the war. Okay, Ghana, you better follow me because we need support here. The Ghanaians did come to my support, but it was after taking a leisurely stroll that definitely made me more stressed than I need to be. Ow, oh, come on, Ghana. That was such a close battle. Ridiculously close. What the fuck, Ghana? And with that, any meaningful opposition was crushed. And I was hoping to siege some of the provinces, but then I got raided. Yeah, they're just going to traipse around there, so I might as well siege down this town to show them who's boss. Hey, who's this? What the fuck do you think you're doing? What do you, who do you think you are? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, I'll come back to that later. Now, they did manage to recover some reinforcements, but it was too little too late. I was going to win on the war score alone. That was ticking up from my occupation. I'd rather not fight them, because that would be rather unnecessary. I shouldn't have to either. And there we go. Yep. 
just required a final stand. And then I got some double good news. The French king had died, and he was younger than me, and I had outlived him. Yippee. Haha. <laughs> outlived the king of West Francia. And wow, that's how France goes boom. And how to celebrate this double victory? Well, gone a northern expedition, of course, into Morocco. And how's it going? Pretty good. Oh, and we have a nice draw in the Saharan Desert again, with no repercussions. Now, before the northern expedition, I promised to go through my dynasty's legacy path, and now I'm going to go through it now. And I'm going to warn you, it took me a long time. This line is good, mostly because of these two. This one is alright, but... I mean, this is pretty obvious, this is good, but it, it just... It just feels like I can do... Three weeks later. That is actually also pretty good. Oh, I, I really cannot decide because I do need more important skill. Two thousand years later. Right. After consulting my council, I can't decide on any of them, so I have to go for the most RP worthy one. And it's gotta be Wonderlust. It has to be, because what is this been what has my kingdom been formed out of? It's been formed out of Wonderlust. So therefore it's gotta be Wonderlust. There you go. Yeah, and the first action I'm gonna do is I don't know if this is the smartest thing to do, but he is my heir and I like this guy better and he sucks. Yep. Yeah. So you're getting sent away. See ya. So anyway, where were we? Oh, the Northern Expedition. Let's go raiding. What I don't get is... Why do you get any... Answers? Yep. So the Northern Expedition started off very well. I was getting the development that I needed for my capital. Um, but then I got plagued by glitches. And to be honest, there's a lot of glitches with the raining mechanic at the moment. And they really need to sort it out. Because I get to this one state and I can't, I can't raid anywhere. Even though I have no truce with them, there's nothing. There's nothing that's stopping me, but I can't raid it. It's really annoying. And this really limited my raids potential because I suffered a lot of attrition because I waited too long in some places when I should have been raiding. So yeah, it was pretty annoying. But oh well, I returned with a full sack of gold. But unfortunately my reward rapidly became bittersweet. Yep, here Steam became infirm. And that's what made me realise... I've got to make use of what I can. And I also realized that I was almost had a completely fully skilled ruler. And I knew I've somehow got to get it. Because I really want to get this achievement where you get a ruler that has the whole life skill pattern. The paths all fully filled out. And I was really he heading for that. So the first thing I did was, well, if I want to get this military one filled out, I better declare war as soon as possible. So this was another war where I had to defeat the armies as soon as possible because initially I was outnumbered. But time was on my side because my enemy and my war goal is very close and his alliances are stretched out all across West Africa. Now it seems my theory on how to get my ruler quicker up the military life path was working because I was getting enough points to get more skills. And the war was going very well as well. And 
There we go. The borders look quite pretty now, don't they? Now, my borders were very beautiful, yes, but I had failed to notice some very sad news. Scylla had sadly passed away, but that wasn't just the bad news for me. I had failed to set up some good education for his sons, um, and it maybe it's gone too far at this point because they're fairly old now and I should have done it sooner. Now, I do rectify this. I do give them proper Norse teachers, but yeah, I should have been on the ball for that. Now, while everything was going mostly okay in my kingdom, I decided to go check out how's Europe doing? How's my homeland doing? And yeah, it's not going very well. Uh-oh, they're going to lose that one. It's because... Essentially what the problem is, Dane Law is going to lose all control of England if it's not careful because the Norse world is too fragmented. It, I think the Norse world pretty much needs a player to help unite it because if not, the AI just goes nuts and starts breaking off doing loads of crazy wars. So yeah, it, without me being there, it's pretty nuts over there. So I don't know what this means for the future of my religion because it's not looking very stable at the moment. At this point, I was quite a loose end, so I thought, let's keep work on my ruler's military life path because I've got nothing else to do. The best way of doing that, let's go raiding. And I thought, okay, let's try West Africa again, maybe somewhere different. And then that's when I saw Yoruba land, the kingdom of Yoruba land. And I thought, that is too delicious not to go raiding there. So we set sail. And then my son returns. And I'm very happy to say he has actually improved. He lost one of his bad traits, I believe it was callous, and now he is brave. So if we can quickly look here, here is the before and then after. And I, I am very happy to say he has improved a lot. Well anyway, back to the raiding. You're probably wondering, how profitable is raiding in deep West Africa? Well, I think this sums it up. Oh. Yeah, on this raid, I got a lot of prestige. Easily over 1,000. And I'm just going to quickly show you some comparisons for the before and after. And usually, what's the max you get from a raid? What, well, maybe 500? That's the you know highest I've got before. But this was absolutely insane. And I definitely used it to the fullest. But I was in for some better news, can you believe it, while on the raid. Oh my god, I can't believe it. We've finally converted my capital. And we've done this within the same ruler. I started this about 23 years ago and we've actually done it. We're going to get there. We're going to get a full Norsic West African kingdom. I believe it. Also, in other news, I'm already just one place away from getting the military life path and I can finally get that achievement. And hopefully this battle will get it for me. Come on. Damn. Okay, just one more. No. Oh, F you, Crusader Kings 3. Just F you. Completely trying to deny me this achievement at the best of your ability, aren't you? If you didn't get what I meant by that outburst, basically that event means my king is going to die very soon. Heyerstein is not going to be walking among us on this earth. So, yeah, I'm preparing for the worst at the moment. And the most annoying thing is I'm literally, literally months away from getting this achievement. I am so close. And there is still a chance I could get it if he just hangs on for, I think, about like 10 months at this point. So now I'm going with the logic, if I go as slow as possible with lots of breaks, the RNG gods will favour me in my endeavour. Nope. <sighs> oh 
Well, Hastin, we had a good run, didn't we? But now we have to turn to the future and look to the rise of King Colbane. And we have many challenges as well as many opportunities. But I'm not going to talk about them in this episode because we're going to be talking about it in the next episode of my Crusader Kings 3 West African Viking Invasion. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel and post a comment about what was your favourite moment of Hairstein's reign and how will you remember him. Rest in peace, Hairstein. And with that, I'll see you on Outwanderers. Wanderers.